Well, well, we've had a rare insight recently into how much money AAA developers are making from adding microtransactions to their box price games. Now, you know that despite the success of their recent titles, Blizzard are undergoing yet another set of layoffs, and this has led to some CVs being posted around LinkedIn. One of these was by the product manager who designed the MTX store for none other than Diablo 4. In his LinkedIn profile, he claims to have created a cash shop that sold over $150 million worth in its lifetime, with the total income of Diablo 4 at this point's lifetime coming to 1 billion US dollars, we now know that 150 million of that was from the cash shop. Now, don't listen to the misinformed people that will tell you that this is nothing compared to games like Genshin Impact. Now, they are right, Genshin Impact does about a billion dollars every six months in microtransactions. Yes, they are both games and one game earns remarkably more in microtransactions, but that is really where at least the intelligent comparisons should end. Being mobile games, their entire user bases are much wider. Being out in Asia with their dominant user bases being in China, Japan, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, etc., there are simply a lot more users with mobile phones ready to play the game in that area than there are people predominantly with PCs in America and Europe that are gamers. So the user base is much wider. Not to mention, they're not paying a $60 box price up front for the game, which kind of limits the amount of people that might get involved with your product in the first place between needing to own a PC and needing to spend $60 for the game. The other problem with this comparison is that it tends to be made by a lot of people that, unlike me, haven't played a lot of gacha games. I don't know why I do. I can't help myself. There are a sea of gacha games out there for whom 150 million would be doing pretty good. You can't take the famous ones that everyone knows and make a general comparison based off that. So then what would be a good comparison to make? Well, in my opinion, let's compare it to the most successful Steam games of 2023. There we have games with box prices, that you need a reasonably decent PC to run. But well, as you can see on your screen now, you should be able to begin to comprehend, this is in millions by the way, how much revenue a developer would be leaving on the table in a popular game by not having a battle pass and microtransactions. Diablo 4 earned over half of the money that Starfield made on Steam solely through microtransactions. A game with a predominantly PC audience that took almost a decade to develop. When you put it like that, whatever flaws you may think Starfield has, and God knows, I, I think it has a few, it is a difficult position to put yourself in as a game producer to stand before a financial board and tell them we're not adding a cash shop into our game. The comparison is even perhaps more striking in the case of Baldur's Gate 3, which many people consider to be one of the greatest PC titles of all time. But Diablo 4's Battle Pass and microtransactions have earned one quarter of the entire Steam earnings of Baldur's Gate 3. This is a much better comparison because I would very much guess that the majority of people that are playing Baldur's Gate are playing it on PC and through the Steam client. And the other titles on this list, many of which admittedly do have large console fan bases, are absolutely dwarfed by how much money Diablo 4 made in microtransactions. And it shows you just how much money a company can make by taking a game that they think is going to be successful as a box title and hiring designers and project managers to set things up just so that the coolest armor is in the cash shop. The coolest horse is in the cash shop because in the end, once you see these numbers, it is very, very difficult for them to justify doing anything else. Just to be clear here, I am talking about putting cash shops and microtransactions into boxed price $60 games. And I hope the earnings here also show that the argument that comes from so many people in defense of microtransactions in this case is obviously false. Yes, people that make gotcha games need to have a cash shop in order to monetize the game they've made. In fact, having a cash shop is the whole point of playing a gotcha game. Whether you're a whale who enjoys gambling or a free-to-play player that gets thrills out of eking out a meager existence through min-maxing your statistics. Nor is this an indie project like the very successful Path of Exile, which relies on supporter pledges, which do admittedly 
give you the coolest looking armor in the game in order to fund what is a free to play game. Games like Diablo 4 would still be massive financial successes without microtransactions. And the idea so frequently bandied about by the apologists for microtransactions who say that even these big box titles need in-game stores in order to support continued development has got to be proven wrong here. There are many box titles that are still getting updates and support without earning $150 million in microtransactions. That money is not going into supporting the developers keeping going on the game. If anything, Blizzard are currently, as we've seen proven on LinkedIn, firing people who worked on the game. All that money, because it's a private company, is going straight back into Microsoft's account. And anytime you're tempted into buying that super cool armor or that battle pass, all you're doing is incentivizing companies to milk you for more cash. I have absolutely nothing against microtransactions in games in general. They've opened up gaming to a variety of regions of the world where it wouldn't be possible otherwise. Some types of games, like gacha games, depend on this whole idea of gamba, in a way. But the idea of working into your game a cash shop and then putting incentives in the game, whether even if they're merely cosmetic, to use that cash shop should not be an acceptable practice in $60 box price games. One of the reasons that Elden Ring does so well and FromSoft games is they don't do that. Black Myth Wukong did not do that. Baldur's Gate 3 did not do that. And everyone who has bought from the cosmetic shop in Diablo 4 or bought that horse in Oblivion back in the day are all contributing to degrading the quality of box price triple A titles because they provide an incentive no matter how small to make you spend money in the game by reserving cool things that would have been created otherwise to go in the store. No design team that's designing, say, armor sets in Diablo 4 does a bunch of cool designs and then says, oh, let's fairly and equitably distribute them between the ones that are acquirable in game and the ones that are in the cash shop. No, the cool ones go in the cash shop and the lame ones go in the game with varying degrees of how far they can push this. Uh, people need to stop defending the practice. Support games that don't do it, don't support games that do do it. I've recently done another video on this channel about potential EU regulation to restrict some of these practices. We'll see how that pans out, and I also know that there's only so much individual people are going to be able to do. The idea of boycotting games or cash shops is really a losing battle in the end. But I do hope this glimpse into the reality of how the finances behind this work out in the case of a AAA box price game shuts up the people that think this is sort of a, a good natured attempt to keep the game funded. There are times when it is, but uh, defending cash shops in $60 box price AAA games just makes you a sucker. And now we got proof. Uh, if you enjoy videos like this, normally they're less of a rant, but this is this is something that really I'm, I'm quite passionate about and it really bothers me in the gaming industry. And if it bothers you too, like and subscribe. I upload hopefully five times a week doing gaming news commentary. And if you enjoy that kind of thing, I enjoy the dopamine hit of a like and a subscribe. And until then, I will see you in the next video.